Hello everyone, in this video we will see the sizing of capacitor and resistor for a pre-charging circuit. Now first of all, why do we need a pre-charging circuit? So let us look at a system as this. So this is some inverter circuit which will feed to some uh, AC motor and this is the DC input. Now this is the capacitor circuit that would come across this uh, DC supply voltage. Now what will happen if suddenly this DC is applied, applied across the resistance. So here we have tried to emulate it. So uh, this is for now not a 100 ohm resistor but I have just kept a 1 ohm resistor which is uh, uh, which is actually we can say the internal resistance of the circuit not some external resistor we have put for now and let us see the waveforms and this is our DC link capacitor that would come across this DC supply so let us see the waveform okay so here you can see at step signal of 2 we are applying a voltage of 56 volt so what we observe here is there is a huge spike in the current the system may not be rated for such huge current besides this R I have kept it significantly high 1 ohm uh, which is the internal resistance may not be that much high just to limit this current but otherwise it would uh, this spike would be of uh, immensely high amplitude and the capacitor is charging to uh, 56 volts so you can see the instantaneous uh, current and the instantaneous peak power it's quite high when we are directly applying the DC voltage across this capacitor so this is the reason why we need the pre-charging capacitor and uh, pre-charging resistor so this pre-charging resistor let us now make it 100 ohm so if we see the calculations from this side we can see we have certain internal logics which we need to look at like the charging duration which is usually five times the RC constant because that's the time uh, for which the capacitor would take to settle down to its maximum uh, charging value or at least 90 percent of the charging value of uh, the battery voltage so an instantaneous peak power which is given by this formula energy needed for free charge capacitor and power needed so if we take these values r is equal to 100 which i mean capacitor is 14 millifarad and battery voltage of 54 or 56 let us take so as for that calculations come up with this power dissipated across the resistor how do we calculate so this power dissipated across the resistor is actually the average power that would be so okay let us run the simulation so this capacitor current or given by i naught e to the power minus t by tau where i naught uh, you very well understand is uh, nothing but v bad by v battery voltage by resistance means when capacitor is initially not charged it will be open circuit the whole voltage will fall across the resistor so that current at that instant will be battery by r which is coming out to be 0.54 or in this case 0.56 and from this formula we can calculate p r equal to it's coming around 3 watts so we need to choose a resistor of 100 ohm and 3 watt power it should be able to take now let us see from this calculation okay so after using the pre-charging uh, circuit what we see the current has come down to 0.56 ampere 
and this the capacitor is taking about one two three four 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 to five seconds to reach to its steady state value of 56 volts and the power peak power which we have calculated was near about 30 watt which we can see here and then is decaying down and average power which would uh, be dissipated across the resistor can be calculated by using the area under this curve so this is the equal power and that we have calculated out to be 3 watt so this is the part number just for instance i have taken this which can be selected or otherwise you can uh, keep a margin of uh, 1.5 times here so the power rating of this resistance can be 4.5 to 5 watt and 100 ohm so this is how we design the recharging resistor okay, thank you